Come on, go! My name's Tim. I'm a musician, a car collector, an automotive journalist, and a lover of all things automotive. I've bought and sold collectible cars for two decades, and I hope my experiences and my point of view helps you find the car of your dreams. Everyone wants to buy one, and everyone is mortally fearful of the car. For me, when it comes to the most exquisite saloon car form, the Arnage has to be the answer. I mean, it has to be the answer, right? I love the Mulsanne, the car that replaced this, but its nose is just a little more fussy. These pre-facelift Bentley Arnages, they're just, they're my favorite. This particular car finished in Silver Tempest with 19 inch wheels off of the later R. It's just uh, the perfect iteration of the sedan for me. People assign a lot to the Bentley name, whether it's luxury or whether it's a specific way that the car makes them feel. Some of that is accurate, but the Bentley for me is more about the quality and the handcrafting and the sort of the, the timelessness that comes with that. Bentleys at their best call back to a time which is forgotten handcrafting. I mean, cars of the 30s, where each piece was made by hand, these cars are that. They were masters of their crafts, and it's somewhat sad to see in the modern era that this is a, a craft that's somewhat dead. It's a truly bespoke experience in every sense of the word, in that it makes it a car that isn't necessarily suited for every taste. Some people are in love with the newest technology, and this is not that. This six and three quarter liter engine had been with Bentley pretty much since the start. It's a beast, but it's old school. So, so is everything about this car. The gauges and the vent design and the wood design is somewhat a thing of the past. And if you like that, this is, this is a great car for you. What you're getting here, there may be cars that could potentially suit your needs better. For me, it's the hand stitching. It is that hand crafting, those pieces that are sort of superfluous, things about the car that are sort of unnecessary, like this Bentley lock cover. I mean, even the badges, the little bit of patina on the bees, I love it that way. I mean, it's a, it's a true antique that you can drive and own, but at the same time, it's a challenging car to really understand. It does not get great fuel economy, and even the key that comes for this car might be off-putting to some people. I mean, it uses a traditional key and key fob. So uh, old technology is a thing with these Bentley Arnages, and is that for you? That's really the question, and for me, it's totally the thing. Maybe through this video, you can understand, does the Arnage tick all the right boxes, and could it be the right car for you? Many of you have watched my Which Do I Buy the Arnage or the Continental GT episode. And I've had this car now for two years and it's probably the car I get the most questions about. So hence the Arnage exclusive uh, video because I think everyone wants to buy one and everyone is mortally fearful of the car, <laughs> which I mean, I get. It is a low production number car, it is a hand-built car, and thus some of the scary aspects of ownership are real, are tangible. One of the questions I get is, does it ride like the softest uh, pillow on the planet? I mean, you have to think, this car was designed in the late 90s. It's an older architecture. Uh, British cars from this era had taller floors and uh, so you don't sit down in this car like you do in a more modern car, you sit sort of on it, which I like, it definitely adds to the sort of uh, Range Rover feel of the car in that you sit high. Uh, I like the high sort of perched feel of the car. Some people may not. Additionally, I mean, I think that in terms of like, is it the greatest riding car of all times? 
there's certain things about this car that make it inherently uh, a good handler. Uh, one of the things that makes it a great handler is that it weighs a million pounds. Things that are very heavy have a tendency to, to handle and sort of float pretty nicely. Um, we're on a really, really broken up road surface right now, and yes, it's, it, it's soft. Uh, it's also a nice compromise between sporty and soft. It, the other question I get is, does it handle? I mean, anything that's 6,000 pounds, does it handle is relative. Uh, I didn't buy this car with the thinking of like, I'm gonna hustle it on a Saturday afternoon. That being said, it's fun to hustle this car. When you turn it in, the, the nose grabs, it, it takes a very uh, neutral stance, which you wouldn't expect. And yeah, you can hustle it. It just is a little bit, as Jeremy Clarkson says, I mean, like it is a little bit like hustling a giant church or something from you know the 18th century. So like, uh, I mean, does it hustle? Yes, it can hustle. A lot of people ask what this is like in relation to other cars. It's interesting. I think compared to most S-Class, this car has much more character, is much more interesting. I think this, the, the shape of this vehicle, and I said this in another video recently, I mean, I'm an aesthetics guy. So like, if you like the car aesthetically, like if, if, if every time you look at an Arnage, you're like, man, that looks great, then you're gonna love the car. Uh, it does drive nice, it is quiet. Uh, getting back to my S-Class point though, I mean the S-Class, you know, mass produced cars are better in some ways. Uh, it is quieter, there is less wind noise in, a, in an S-Class. I mean, I know that that might be sacrilege to say and some Bentley owners, I, on the forums I see guys that say, this is the worst riding car I've ever had. And I think part of that is because their expectation was wrong. Uh, and then there's other people that say this is the best riding car I've ever had. And, you know, I guess it just depends on what you're you're comparing the car to. Uh, it does handle nicely. It is a great car to, to ride in, to drive. But you're buying this car for what it is and what it represents. I mean, I think you're buying it for the 350 man hours that carved every piece of wood and the ting, ting, ting of the metal uh, on the vents. The, or you know you're buying handmade and there really is no more handmade I mean there really isn't if you look in a new Continental GT or a flying spur it's uh it's pretty sad I mean because even the grill is just plastic coated in like a chrome it looks bespoke but honestly it's very mass-produced and it's not what this car was this car shares more with a car like a spiker than it does you know with an s-class and so I know I've kind of gone around, you know, does it ride soft? Yes, it rides soft. Does it corner? Yes, it corners. Is it super fast? I mean, you've seen the, the numbers are ac accurate. It is a high five second, zero to 60 car, um, pretty conservatively. I mean, I think uh, even on three quarters throttle, it's gonna put down a pretty quick zero to 60 time. Uh, it is extremely thirsty. Um, and it is extremely handmade in that there are things that, you know, aren't perfect on this car that would be on like a line produced S-Class. So is this the right car for you? I mean, I think realism is, and why you want the car and why you appreciate the car is probably the most important, you know, part of realizing is the car or answering the question for yourself, is the car right for you? You know, should you be afraid of the car? So I've had this car two years. I've put on, I wanna say I need to check, but I think 5,000 miles uh, since I purchased it. Maybe as much as eight. I don't know, I don't remember quite what the miles were. In that time, I've changed the oil twice. And that's it. <laughs> so uh, I bought the car because it had good service history. So uh, I do think with any car, buy, buy one that's been serviced and your, uh, your gonna have a better experience. In terms of maintenance, a lot of parts on this car are shared with uh, BMW and other vehicles that are not crazy expensive. So you can cross-reference, like the fuel pumps are from a Porsche 911, the brakes are from a BMW. And I have a, a couple of specialist independents that are familiar with the car, that are willing to service the car. And so I, I mean, it doesn't really keep me up at night. The other big question that comes up with this car versus 
the newer car. So there's a, this is the pre-facelift. Well, there's, I guess we could talk about the green label, the red label, and then the twin turbo cars. The twin turbo cars, which are 02 and a half, 03 and newer, uh, are great cars with one caveat. And it's the reason I bought a single turbo car over that is when you look at the single turbo cars, so late, even late, like Continental T's and uh, uh, Turbo R's and then this car, uh, they have this large single turbo six and three quarter liter engine. And people stress about, oh, what if the head gaskets go? What if the head gaskets go? So I bought this from a, a place that only serviced Ferrari and Bentley. And they said, you know, we, we rarely do head gaskets on cars that aren't either abused or high miles. And they went through this whole thing of, you know, you gotta warm it up and blah, blah, blah. Since I've had this car, it has not used a drop of coolant and I've never had any issues and it has had the coolant system uh, flushed, the radiator flushed and those things prior to me getting it. That being said, I don't think it's as big of an issue as people purport. Now, you can do your own research on that and you, there's tons of people on forums that are stressing about, oh, the single turbo cars will blow head gaskets. I would definitely prefer that in that a blown head gasket is something that's very easy for me or any number of people to work on, to fix. The problem with the early twin turbo cars and I, the first few years, really three or four years of twin turbo cars, the cam isn't hardened enough and there's cam issues. So basically the twin turbo cars, particularly like 03, 04, 05, can have cam failure. So if you're looking at one of those cars and it has a check engine light, it's probably not a misfire related to a coil or a spark plug, or it's probably related to a failing cam. There are no replacement cams. So if you come from the world of hot rodding and you have a guy that can grind you a cam and you can get the specs from Bentley, I suppose you could fix it. But there are numerous cars out there right now that are for sale for almost no money that have failed cams that are basically like paperweights because they need a cam. So that kept me off the first few years. The other thing is I really like the pre-facelift. The vertical turn signal on these cars that sort of echoes the older uh, Rolls-Royce and Bentley products, I just love it. So like for me, the pre-facelift cars are definitely my favorite. And honestly, like this car, the only thing I would take over this car is like an, a Continental T or an R or one of these in a better color combination. Like, uh, and I like this color exterior. The, the interior two-tone gray is a little bit meh for me. But uh, anyways, those are the core questions. Um, I, I will be happy to continue to own this car and then answer future questions. It's right for me. Like, I really like the car, but I think it's very subjective. And uh, is it the best car ever made? I think visually, this is one of my favorite cars of all time. In terms of sedan or saloon car, I don't think they, they look better than this car. This thing is just perfectly penned. And that's a review. This year of the red label, only 638 left-hand drive vehicles were built. It rides in a 122.7 inch wheelbase. And I really like the shorter of the two wheelbases offered on the Arnage. Most importantly, it comes with 620 torque delivered at 2100 RPM. It's a great vehicle. I've really enjoyed owning it. I love the tapering boat tail and the tall and stately demeanor that this car projects. If you're going to look for one, look for the best one you can find. That's gonna be worth significantly more than one that needs some fettling. For me, the Arnage is the quintessential sedan form. I don't think it can be beaten. What about you?